Can you beat on a maid solo? In Baldur's Gate Frame, this is the hardest difficulty. When you die, your save file gets deleted permanently. <laughs> Holy crap, she just one-shot me. Many would consider this to be the most gamer challenge because having one character means any little slip arm. <laughs> okay, big is the run. So join me on my adventure as I steal, stealth, and destroy Act 1 using God's favorite Brentas. We pick the best girl, Shadow Kitty. I mean, Shadow Hunt. I picked Minor Illusion here because it's going to help us get the time string later. Dear Larian, if you're watching, can I get a Twilight Cleric subcast, please? A girl needs a greater invis. I'm sorry, um, my attention span. Okay, this will be the weirdest stat allocation. So I went 16 decks, right? And 16 charisma. The reason being is I need cheaper prices and to pass one particular dialogue check. Also, we need that persuasion. Hey, leave a comment if you recognize this lady. Wake up, shadow pretty. Stop touching your box and let's go. As soon as we regain control, what? we have to do the most important thing for the build. Shoes off. Hit him with that toggle for that dream. I know you probably think I'm the biggest sharp poster right now, but there's a lot of genuine anime tips and tricks I want to share. Next we meet Shadowheart's canonical girlfriend, but unfortunately for her, we stripped her armor and most importantly, her shoes. Don't forget about her existence. Hey, it's a solo run, okay? The only thing I should mention here is we're gonna pick up everything to sell. Lazelle's armor upgraded our AC to 19. So I'm gonna use this pot here. They sell back, so I'm gonna, um... What? Anytime you hear first person narration, it's from the recording, which is available as a sleep aid. These cultists are worth 10 XP each. So here's a trick of the control room. If you dash before interacting with the door, You'll get extra move speed when you enter combat. So we already have dash active and I'm going to do it again. Like check out how far we can move here. Also I'm going to cast sanctuary so no one bothers me. I'm going to pick up from any mind player body here. They have little gems you can sell. Hey yo, those dogs so free. You know what else was a surprise? A shadow kitty smiling. Have you ever seen that? Anyways, our first stop on the beach is to collect a fish from this bucket. So here's the first skip we can do. We can skip the intellect of errors by jumping on these rocks. So over here we find a chest which gives us five XP. A hand? No! Can't make it out by myself! I guess Gale like Aiden now shoes this playthrough. Not that we actually wear shoes. This engine mine fire has a chance to drop a speed potion. God dang it. Be very snaky, Shadow Honey. Who knows what this vampire could do? If you didn't know, if you jump over here, there's a chest under a rock that has two speed pots in it, provided that you Nice view. We felt the nature check and we didn't get it. Hey look, a shovel. 59 gold is pretty sad, but every bit counts on this run. I've played a lot of early access, and the Grove 5 puts me to sleep. I will literally do anything to skip it, so I teleport back to camp. If you own the Definitive Edition, there's some goodies in this chest. I'm mainly after the Potion of Fly and the Strength Elixir. So here I'm going to crouch and use my Potion of Fly. I'm literally using the potion out of desperation just to skip this fight. The cutscene will trigger, but we will be out of combat. I'm gonna float down over here. This chest isn't worth very much money, but I'm gonna pick it up anyway. I'm gonna do some cheeky gardening here. So you know how we picked up that fish earlier? If you give it to Tuffet, that's 15 XP. Oh no, Arabella stepped on a Lego. Next we spoke to Nettie and leveled up. We get our first level in Ranger. This is only temporary for now. I'll go through the proper build when we respawn. Oh, sorry, I've got distracted there. So I'm gonna wait until she's out of the room and pick up this mind flare parasite specimen. And that is a mouthful. I'm gonna say space gummy from now on. Next we talk to Valo, who's going to be very important. The reason being is he's going to be our pickpocket victim every bloody single day. Okay, so we talked to Arabella's parents here for 45 XP. Is your hair different at all? Anyways, I sold my junk and bought some strength elixirs. Heading back outside, the grow fight is finally done. I loot everything quickly, drink a strength elixir, and meet bestie Raphael. Hey yo. So the reason why we're up here is for the garden's amulet. It's located on the skeleton. Look, I know I'm a cleric now, but I'm gonna change later. 20 gold, really? So I'm gonna jump over here as a cheeky shotgun. I send these two into the Albear cave and I'll obtain a space gummy. You know the drill. Be a loot goblin. Speaking of a goblin, we can skip Skip the encounter by disguising as a drow. 
trickery cleric isn't useful, don't delude yourself. Well, well. Wait. A drow. 170 XP for this encounter. The next encounter is one easy dice roll. Netting us 190 XP. Entering the windmill cellar, we find 100 gold. An alchemist fire in this crate at the top of the windmill. Hey, while we're here, we're going to release the gnome. From live, Tihi. Shove out the claw! Drow coming through! We finally got a level up, and I'm going to pick our second level in Ranger for the enhanced link. We can cover a lot of ground quickly using the enhanced light. Volu seems to be in trouble, so I spoke to him. Heading inside is our final drow dialogue. This gives us 120 XP. Volu, sweetie, do you want to come out of that cage? <laughs> After lockpicking Priestess's door, I tried to sneak past his ogre. You don't have permission to be here. And it took me many attempts because I'm bad. Entering a forbidden. You don't. You set for. So you know what? Finally, I got the Misty Step Amulet. Why do we need this? Let me show you. I snuck around Draw Raxlan and teleported behind the locked door. I know this looks visually appealing, but it only has 560 gold. Since we're stuck behind the door, I had to teleport back out. So I'm gonna jump over here, climb down these rocks. I actually didn't know this for a while. There's a skeleton in a bush here, and it has the smuggler's ring. So this ring gives us plus two stealth, plus two sleight of hand, and minus one charisma. It's the toll collector's key, Uwu. Using that key, we're gonna enter this hatch and be loot goblins. 270 gold, not bad. This puzzle was a brain scratcher. There's a pressure pad here, so I just jumped over it. So I found 209 gold in this chest, and I looted the rest of the room. I know, this is pretty boring. I heard you like some danger, right? This next part is going to happen really quick, and there's a potential run in there. In this cave of fully deadly traps, and one simple misstep, not to be confused with misty stamp, is going to send you reeling to the main menu. Okay, I'm done with the pun, sorry. We're going to bypass them by jumping on these platforms. The tripwire is in this area, so we're going to jump right to the end here. Here I enter snake mode and I'm gonna jump over. Basically steal this lockbox as quick as you can and teleport out. Cause if you get into combat there, that could be a game over. We Kane's rest was our next stomp, and the door could a taste of shadow feet. That cheeky little smirk she just did, oh my god. Damn, Tony, eh? Shadow Cutie is so strong. Come! Let me tell you, this room has so much food, it'll last until Act 3. If you're not a paladin. So Shadow Cutie picked up some butter buns. Yo. So in here's a run in the year. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hop here. And hop here, like, as fast as I can. I mean, if we fail the dialogue here, we won't die. Some of you are so blessed in the comments. If the smugglers, you can jump on the roof and fall down Watch behind them and just sneak past, completely avoiding Dolo. Thank you, Nightmare Wraith. There's a key in this bottom crane, and that gets me into the center down. So here is where we need a charisma chain. I'm gonna go persuasion, hopefully, I get the roll. It's six to nine, but I might put advantage on. So here's a little shortcut you can do. You can, like, um, just jump across. Give Mummy Seraphs the chest. You know, the one that we picked up? Okay, so buy the gloves of Favorite off Brem. These give advantage on slider handshakes. Since I cast Charm Person on Ceres, I teleported back to the entrance and waited out the spell's duration. Okay, time for violence. My ADHD is killing me. After measuring the shove distance, I set up with a minor illusion and shove her. Go on, Shadow Cutie, light the world on fire. So it's just two enemies left, I'm just gonna hide. What? Old mate just ran into- what? After roasting the last end, we appreciate the destruction caused by our favourite barefoot Sharon. The time string is our forever bow on this playthrough. And let me tell you, it's so strong that I made a video on it. It is a literal wind button for BG Frame, and I can't express it in words. We go back to camp to steal from Volo. Remember, this is going to be a daily or level up routine for gold. I gave myself guidance here and started stealing. Don't forget the gloves of Fevery here. Volo is one of the safest people to steal from in Anamon. 
You fail it, he's just gonna run away and be a little bitch. That's him. Okay, decision point here, people. Option one, you can follow along with me on my personal routing to act two for the most overpowered gamer gear. No, in all seriousness, it does turn act one into a joke. Option two, tidy up the Grove quest line before proceeding. See new day, strength elixir. Guidance and steal from bestie. The next part is why I don't speedrun. I cast for clan and due to my bad positioning, I entered combat. Luckily I was far enough away for the enemies to not one shot me. I didn't want to take the risk so I just used an invis potion and ran away. We're gonna go to act two for some quick retail therapy. I promise it will be worthwhile. Did you know Shadow Sweetie is immune to the lesser shadow curse? So here's another skip you can do for early act two. If you prepare the command spell, you can command the drider to drop his moon lantern. There's actually no repercussions for this. And we ran out of spell slants. Great. Let's long rest to regenerate them. The third time was the charm. Let's keep your hand. And the enemies won't attack you for picking up the moon lantern. I'm going to do the kindest thing this playthrough and let the pixie out. Actually, not really. I'm just too lazy to carry it around. Okay, Shadow Cutie's done. Anyways, we unlocked the Riftwind Town Waypoint and the Waypoint at Last Light Inn. Did you know there's an Invis Potion here? Okay, so on the top floor of this barn is a chest that is worth a lot of gong. Okay, now it's time to sell all our junk and to spend the majority of our gong at Quartermaster Tally. The first purchase is the UNT Scale Mal, which will protect us for the majority of our playthrough. The AC bonus isn't capped from our danks, which is nice because we'll get plus 5 once we hit 20 danks. Also, the armor is featured in the thumbnail image. Thanks Paige, I love you bestie. Another good thing about the armor is that it doesn't impose disadvantage on stealth. The second purchase is the Cloak of Protection. It grants a plus 1 to AC and saving throws. Adding to our solo safety net, the final purchase from Tali is the Amulet of the Harpers, which gives us the shield spell, which might save our life, and it gives us advantage on wisdom saving throws. Next, we see Arash at Moonrose. The most important thing here is the risky ring. So that's gonna cost us 14.50. It gives us advantage on attack rolls, but also disadvantage on saving throws. So pretty much this ring and the time string will carry us through act one. Whoopsie, I kidnapped Roa and stole a drake throat glaive. So another trick here is that you can drop the time string on the ground and cast elemental weapon granted by this glaive. It is time for a race bank. So I'm gonna go ranger here. I'm like an urban tracker for the sleight of hand. So I want 17 in danks, 16 in con. Because we're solid, we can die at any point, yeah? 14 in charisma and stealth proficiency. With level 2, the most important thing was to pick the archery fighting style. Just for the plus 2 to attack rounds. Level 3 is Gloom's Talker. My favourite Act 1 subclass. So we're gonna attempt the Ogre's level 3 here. So I'm gonna open the Hunter's Mark. This gives us a surprise round, yeah? Gloomstalkers get an additional attack on round one called the Dread Ambusher. Since it's a surprise round, I get a free turn. So I attack here on my next turn. Using Dread Ambusher Hide as a bonus action, the enemies don't know where we are. For those in doubt and think Stealth Archer is a late game build, I have broken the AI at level three. So you can pretty much see how this went when I get a free turn every round. So essentially what I'm doing is shoot, dread ambush a hind, and turn. Rinse repeat until your enemies are dead. Okay, I'm gonna cut through the footage now. And we get another power spike at level 4. We pick up our first feat called Sharp Tutor. It deals an additional 10 damage with a minus 5 on the attack roll. Since we have the Risky Ring, it's completely offset, like it doesn't even matter. We are literally so powerful right now. We're pretty much gonna turn Act 1 into a hit list. I made a visit to Auntie Ethel. We're gonna need the Strength Elixir to sustain the Titan String Bow. I also bought the Invis Pod as a backup. My next agenda but... was Levitar's Blessing. I actually found this out recently. Oh. If you take off your armor, you get a plus four to checks here. Shadow Sweetie got branded, and once I got Priestess in private, I went to the high ground and coated my bow in Drow Poison. I'm actually so used to the Stealth Archer attack so quickly, she doesn't even have a chance to react. Okay, while I was editing this, 
I've heard the biggest cope during the recording. Okay, here comes the Evelyn confession. To me, honestly, Bowermancy's um, A, insurance, and B, therapeutic. Space gummy, yummy. The first space gummy power I usually go for is cold awake. I'm just gonna summarize it really simply. Basically, when an enemy dies, it explodes. Okay, so remember that ogre that was annoying me earlier? That's where you get your piece of If you pass this perception check, you can lockpick it and skip the puzzle. Never mind. I don't think I've done this puzzle since 2022. Okay, I looked at the recording just then, and it took me 30 seconds. I'm so glad my brain still works. A bit risky, but I might do the spectator at level 4. The trick of the spectator fight is to attack the drill from the high ground and not get surprised. In fact, it was Shadow Kitty that gave the surprise round. We did about 90 damage on turn 1, which isn't bad considering we're only level 4. I used the Dread Ambush behind, and the spectator had no idea. Next, I skip the Belan with a Feathersaw Enhanced Lame. So here I'm gonna just use an Invis Bun. It's a bit overkill for these turrets, but I'm being lazy. Does anyone else call it the Saucy Flower? So the actual reason we're here are for these mushrooms, Tim Mask Spores, and the Tongue of Madness. Why should a heart so pretty? She looks so uncomfortable now. Hey, so you remember the stool from my Ton String video? You can actually destroy the stool. Mm, and you get the down. Club of Hill Giant Strength. strength. Hill. Once you equip him, it sets your strength to 19. Another ornament trick that I've learned is that you can shoot these deactivated turrets. They give 40 XP each, and there's four of them. God, Shadowhunt, so distracting to look at. So we head to the Mykonet colony. If you talk to Blair, he summons Amelian. Hey, so remember the mushrooms recollected? I did his quest so I could get these boots. The boots of Stormy Clamor are so good. Normally I go shoeless with the shadow feet out, yeah? But these are the only boots that I would consider wearing. Speaking of shoes, the gnome gave me hers. Also, we give this lady a noble store. It's gonna pay off in Act 3. Okay, let's sail across the water now. I showed Gek the brand and said I had the shoes, which That's gave me safe sailing. Hey, do you want to know a shortcut for the Shah Idol? If you jump over here and Misty Step will jump onto this area. The Shah Idol's here and you don't have to go through that puzzle. So here's another little shortcut. If you jump over here and if you jump over here, you unlock the waypoint without them stupid platforms killing you. Here is my super secret grim strategy. I gave myself fly and went back to the platform. I then summoned him by attacking the lava Don't valve. You, you know how I said I had a strategy? We're just gonna throw things at him pretty much. Shoes work really well against him. If the lava runs in, just shoot that valve again with your bow. Okay, see you, Grim Misty. Oh my god, look at all that stuff we just threw at him. So maybe I should do the Goblin Cam, Wubs of Archery. Don't really have to use Darkness here. Shadow Bestie poisoned the Goblin Strings, and they all gathered around. Go on, Shadow Kitty, light the world on fire. This is kind of karma, yeah? I almost had a panic attack standing way too close to this barrel here. I feel my gun. What I'm doing here is I'm holding control to see my range. Now I'm going to position my character at the max range. And while still holding control, I left click to attack. This should not aggro the enemies. Draw Raxlin was next. Oh dang it, I got spotted there. He could end my run, actually. Look at my god. So I invest here and ran away. Okay, for my second attempt. I turned into a tryhard. I put magic weapon and elemental weapon on the bow. So that's a plus three bow in act one. I coated my bow in drow poison to great effect. And the AI was so smart. Old mate shoved brawl just to wake him. I'm literally gonna... Mm. I'm not gonna risk it here. I'm just gonna invis. Oh my god, this is so annoying. It's like so low. So draw range and walked past me for some reason. Shutter Heart is hard-coded to miss, and I didn't want to take the risk, so I hit and reset the fight. Okay, I'm gonna try that again, the Drill Poison. I wanted to do that from the very start. Bruh. 
Anyways, after the clowny is fine, Another parasite. we get a space gummy for ability drain, which synergizes with my boots. We hit level five, getting our second attack. I also picked pass without trace because it gives me plus 10 in stealth. Okay, it took me this long to dye my armor black. I was pretty lazy here. So I attacked the gif in the dialogue, just a shortcut to the crash. Time for the game of cheer, sweeting. So I use my only inspiration point. Please, I really want this bath. Okay, I'm just gonna Google this real quick. See which one has the lower DC. They're both 18, oh my god. No game of cheer buff for us. Shadow Heart's so pretty. How many misses do you want, Shadow Kitty? I'm literally just crouched in the corner now here. Just to put my hands on everything. Action. Okay, that was lucky. The knife of the Under Mountain King. This gamer knife reduces the crit roll required by one. This is so therapeutic, everyone. I mean, a lot of people get upset over barrel mancing. It's always been like a Larian special. Okay, this is just beautiful. Go on, Shadow Kitty. Light the world on fire. Oh my god, she's so pretty. Anyways, after waving to Vlakov, I finally get my favorite headpiece in the game. The Deedom of Arcane Synergy. I'm going to wear it all game because it's slaying. Come. Hey yo. Welcome to Morgana Everland. Why, today we're a witnessing a betrayal of all time between Shadow Cutie and Imposter Milkers. Shadow Kitty, no, how could you? I really thought you wouldn't. Okay, the actual reason we're in here is we get a temporary bless buff. This grants a 1d4 damage to attack rounds and lasts until long rests. Okay, let's tidy up Act 1. Shadow Honey sniped at the Wager. And we handed that quest in for another buff. Bliss Balls grants a 1d6 bonus to a lot of things, but I only care about the attack rolls, really. Next, we hunted a devil. I must and handed her head in for a gamer sword. So if you're doing a solo run, you want to kill this traitor first. She can hold person new, which ends the game. Doesn't even have a bloody sword. After dealing with the paladins, Shadow Kitty went hyena hunting. She was very careful, retreating after every shunt so she doesn't get spotted. We picked up a space gummy and it went into luck of the far realms. This gives us a guaranteed crit once every long rest. Another reason why we're here is to collect hyenas. They're used to craft potions of Spain, which give us haste. I guess it really is a solo run. Empty words. Clearly. I can't imagine being a stinky Salunite. You know, we gotta kill the doggos for Shadowhan. We I'll literally clean sweeped them. Did you know the mimics can't attack you from up here? You attacked someone. Okay, I got into combat here, that. and as soon as I started moving. <laughs> What just attacked me? That was weird. He attacked me from down there, okay? This janky, bulked little man almost ended my honor run. So I went invisible and noped out of there. Are you okay there, buddy? Like, what are you doing? That's right, I got my revenge. Hey, just between you and me, alright? Here's a little game of secret. So, the enemy is invisible, right? If you ping the portrait, you can find out where they are. Oh. I was expecting a really difficult fight from near. After that near to fix experience, we went back to Spore and leveled up, getting our first dip into Rogue. Oh wait, what's this? Is that a plus nine to stealth? I mean, it's a solo run, but I want Glut just to kill him, alright? Next, we fight the big, bad Bulan. Shadow Kitty coated her bow with the oil of accuracy. Then the bullet jumped out of the ground, putting us into combat. The first arrow was fired. Only dealing a poultry 26 damage. Feeling disappointed with the damage, she then trod an ice arrow. 
Only 26 damage, bruh. Okay, 41, not bad. Shadow QD then used a bonus action to dread ambush a hind. The stupid Landshark had no idea where she was. It's your turn, Shadow Sweetie. Okay, I'm just gonna drop some general advice here. These Lava Methods do give 75 XP each, which is a lot, but it does come up with a surprise round. I've actually had one slow wipe here, so yeah, be careful or don't do it at all. It's been nice, Lady Espar. If there's anything to take away from this video, just check out how strong stealth is. I know these enemies aren't strong, but I'm literally succeeding every stealth check here. I've carefully planned my build, gear, and proficiencies for my own unique playstyle. I find it really rewarding to see it in action and if I help out anyone else. Okay, we picked up a passive here. We do 1d4 extra radiant damage. I'm literally standing right next to him and he doesn't know. Must have been the wind. Just as you find your flow, you slip. No, not the shadow buns. Good. Unseen. Perfect. Is that a scroll of greater invisibility? Did you forget about Auntie F or Miss Evelyn? No, I do want that plus one dags, but I decided she was too much of a risk without the ring of free action. So I'll grab the hag hair next time. Thank you so much for watching. I truly appreciate the kindness and support from the community, especially from my patrons. And I can't express in words how much your company means to me. Subscribe only if you want to, and let me know if you'd like an Act 2 video. See you, sweetie.